Hello everyone, this is Teresa Perkins, the editor and host of Exposure Spotlight Magazine, where your voice matters. And I am here today with a very special guest. Look, he has a lot to share with us. He is, he currently lives here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He was raised in Los Angeles, California. And not only that, he was raised in, in, in Los Angeles, California, but he was a gang member at a very early age. And also he became homeless where he only had $75 to his name. But listen, he is here to share how God has changed his life from rags to riches. And he also is releasing a book very soon called Born Again. Help me to welcome everyone. Our special guest on today is Samuel Lee. How are you doing? I am doing great. I thank you for having me on your show today. Oh, you're so welcome and thank you for being a part of it because again, Samuel, your voice does matter. Look, yes. share with everyone about Samuel Lee. What is it that we should know about you? Well, to make a long story short, I want the whole world to know my story. Um, I know that my story, is, it has to be told and it has to be, be given to the whole world to hear because of what God has done for me. Something I just can't keep silent. No longer has this book been boiling over for the past 10 years of my life. I've always been telling my family and my close friends that I wanted to write a book. And here I am, pretty much doing God's work by doing it so, and it's coming to pass. So I'm, I'm excited about it. And I just can't wait till the whole world see the life of Samuel Lee. Oh, that is awesome. We are looking forward to it. Now look, tell us more about the book. So the book is called Born Again. How did yes. you come up with that name? born again well that's the whole theme of the whole book itself um me coming from an area that i came from i came from the projects and it was in the 1980s where gangs and crack cocaine was very rampant and i grew up in that that we say quote unquote environment and i was a product of that environment and because of that um, it dictated my behavior. But uh, one day, I gave it all up to Christ, and I said, it got to be a better way. And once I surrendered, then that's where uh, things got, it turned around for the good. And it turned around so good that, oh, it's, it's something that I can't even describe in 30 minutes. It's like a book just waiting to be on the shelf for everyone to examine and to see my life. Because as we know, a lot of other youths have been in the same or similar situation. Didn't live through it. I'm 53 years old and I lived through it. And I can tell. And it's basically from rags to riches because here it is now. I'm a homeowner. I'm a business owner. Uh, I got many hats, many jobs. And I'm very successful in everything that I touch and do. And I owe it all to God and the Savior, Jesus Christ. So I got to give, give it all to him because he opened up doors that no man can shut. So without any other credit, I give it all to him. Give it all to him. That's great. Look, so let's talk about you being a gang member because we know yes. that there's a lot of young kids that's out there and they feel like that's the only way to, to actually get themselves known or feel like that they are someone by okay. becoming a gang member. So you became a gang member yes. at the age of 14 years 14. old. Yes. And, and I mean, in the heart of Los Angeles, California, yes. out of all places, my God. So how did you actually find yourself at the age of 14 years old to get well, involved? Just to, just to simplify everything is, uh, I had no father, no role model at all. Um, and my book would tell it all, really. Uncut, 
that um, not only that, I had family members that were addicts. So I didn't really have someone that was solid. My mother, she worked all day long. My grandmother, she could just barely manage the home with her grandchildren, which was four of us, plus her own children, which some of them were strung out on drugs. And this is how I kind of spiraled into the game because I wanted to find a family that was solid. And the streets was, I call family in the beginning because it was glamorous, it was glitty. It was something that I was so interested in because in the fancy cars, I seen the money, I seen the jewels and all of that didn't really profit me nothing because once I really gained all these things in the end of it, I still had no peace. But what really, really, want, uh, I was just so impress impressionable to my, my peers. Um, they would fight and win. And I had that spirit of, wow, these guys is fighting and they win in fights. And I wanted to be a part of that. And once they jumped me into the gang, it was like, oh, I was all in. It was do or die. And from that point, from 14 to 21, I was a full-pledged member, and I was willing to do anything and everything to prove myself that I was fully affiliated. And, you know, in the middle of everything, I found out that I was serving Satan. And that's when my life started to change because I was doing everything that was evil and everything that was wrong in the sight of God, in the sight of society. Um, it was one time in my life I was... I was like an outlaw, like in the old West. Everybody was after me. The law, the people that I hurt, the community, everybody was after me. And I said, is this how this is how my life wanna, you know, turn out? And I was at the crossroads and, and I was smart enough to say, enough is enough. Because it still didn't bring me no peace. Once I achieved what I thought was righteous, well, the money, uh, the paraphernalia, the drugs, I still didn't have no peace. And I was searching for peace. And when I found that peace, I knew that all of that other stuff didn't matter. And I found God in the midst of darkness, you know, in the midst of the belly of the beast, I can say, because that's just what it was. And I can tell you this, and it's in my book, it wasn't easy getting out. It didn't, it didn't happen overnight. And it was some trials and tribulations that I had to go through to get out. And um, gonna, I was I tested. I was oh yeah, I was that. tested. And I was proven that I was a servant of the Most High God by diligently turning my back against the gang and not being affiliated no longer. And it, it, it took me, it took a lot of heart and a lot of guts because of course your friends, your peers be like, wait a minute, blood in, blood out. Like you can't go nowhere. This is, this is for life right here. But I, I choose Christ and I told them, I put it into their chest and I said, I'm, I'm gonna serve God. And I can tell you, and this, is, this part is not in the book, but I can tell all the people listening, you can't go wrong without God. Mm. You can't. You can't go wrong. Because I had one guy threaten my life, and he was serious. He wanted to prove his name. He said, man, I don't care about what you represent now. I don't care about who you are. You owe me. And, 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 and when you've been in a gang, you, you pretty much owe your life to them. And that's what he meant. And I wasn't afraid. I said, you know what? I'm born again. I'm, I'm ready to die for this. And I told everybody that. And some of my peers pat me on the back. And the one that was angry at me, he was still angry. And I could see it in his eyes that he wanted to do something to me. So two weeks later, I found out that guy died. And I said, look at God. Not because he died, but because he took the enemy away from me. Because he had, God had a plan for me. Amen. And because of his hatred for me, Mm. That that word comes alive that no weapon formed against me Come shall on, be able God. to prosper. Oh, See, that, that word is alive and living, and it worked in my mm. 
like that then when I was young and I was only 24 when this happened. And it's not because, because they had a funeral. I didn't go to the funeral, but everybody was mourning. Everybody was crying. But I simply said, look at God. Because if I would have waited too long, this man probably could have took my life because he felt that I was a backstabber to the set, to the gang, to the Crips. I was just, I was just a backstabber. So you know what they do with backstabbers? They get rid of them. But God had another plan for my life. And I'm standing, well, actually, I'm sitting before you, and I'm a witness that you can't beat God. No way. Give him a chance. He'll change your life. And he sure will answer prayer. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Look, I was just thinking as you were speaking, you know, so this happened, you know, at the age of 14, you say you're 53. So that's what, about 39 years ago. Like, so some yeah, of about people 39 that, years ago. Okay, so some of those people that uh, you were a part of this game with, I mean, have you you know, uh, came across them uh, in the past recently? Oh, yeah. Um, over a span of 39 years, I have come across a couple of them, and I've been, I've been taking them out to eat and saying, change. Some of them still addicts. Some of them still on skid row. Now, I describe you, in Los Angeles, there's a community called Skid Row. Most of my friends are on skid row, and they're strung out. My age, they're strung out. And then some of them are in the penitentiary. So I have maintained contact. I talked to one of my guys that I have a picture of, me and him when we were young, but it's going to be in my book. So you got to get the book to see it. And it has our set in the back, and it has us kneeling down, throwing up our gang sign. So that would be a treat for those that really don't believe that I was a gang member. And it would show that I had the jerry curl, I had the grease on the collar, I had all of the all of the things that you would imagine LA gangs were back in the 80s. I was. I had a long jerry curl and I had my rag and we stooped down and did our gang signs. And um I talked to him uh, about a year ago and he was excited. He said, Man, you bought a house, you married. Uh, he, you can see how excited he was for me because he knew how long, how long it's been and how, how far it's been. I mean, our travel our journey, you know, he went down one road, I went down another. And he, just to hear good things come out of my life is it, an inspiration to him. I, I heard it in his voice. He wanted to see me, but... He's still, he's in Los Angeles. I'm in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So, you know, I am taking a trip back to LA next week, actually. Um, and uh, I might bump into him and take him out to eat and talk to him and see how he's doing because I know God kept him alive for a reason. And I know it's to save him. And that's the most important thing, why he's still alive. And he's not strung out. Hopefully, I pray that he's not and that he's willing to see me. So I, I, I pretty much stay in contact with some of my friends in the past. It just all depends on their demeanor and their lifestyle. If, I, if their lifestyle dictate the same thing, I, I don't want no parts of that. Right. If I got to go into something that's dark and evil, I, I can't go, I won't go. You have to meet me on uh, neutral territory, like at Denny's or something, or, or a restaurant. I'm, I'm not going to go where the devil dwells because, of course, you know anything can happen. So I'm, I'm smart. I'm street smart on that. Yeah. But still, today you just don't go in uncharted territory. Right. So tell us about the outreach. You started the outreach, right? Oh, man, I'm 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 so excited about the outreach. It's called Energy Outreach. It has many facets to it. I want to break it down. The reason why it's called Energy, and I put G for the emphasis of that, the letter. G stands for a whole lot of things. Number one, G stands for God. And number two, it's good to be fit and feel good about yourself when you're exercising. 
Um, I will be on Facebook Live and I will be a professional instructor. And it's gonna be a light 30 minute course of working out and staying fit and healthy with a God background uh, or God outline. And, um, and it's God based too as well. I'll be having scriptures before and scriptures after the workout. Um, and it's just something that is positive and God had put in my heart to do. Then he also gave me to feed the homeless um, in Baton Rouge. I found out being a supervisor at my job, there's a lot of homeless people out here. Yeah. I didn't really realize it until I really actually started working three years ago. even more so since this pandemic. Oh, yeah. my God. It's just so many homeless people. And they're riding the bus, like, just to get out of the cold. I mean, by the 50s, like 50s after 50, 50 people and then 50 more. You can just see them just going from bus to bus, and that's all they're doing is getting warm. And I'm like, wow, you know, this is – this is something that I need to make a difference in because, of course, I was once homeless. So my heart goes out to the homeless in Baton Rouge. So that's another element of my, of my company as well as my ministry. And it's called Energy is to feed the homeless and really make a difference, yeah. not just speak about it in a sermon, but be about it. And that's what I'm all about. I'm, I'm, I know where to go. I'm, I'm gonna stop at the Cartana Mall. I'm gonna stop on 22nd and Florida. And we just, me, my wife, and a team of mine, we're just gonna go out and start handing out water because we see all of them out there, just like they're in need. I would like and, to be a part of that when you guys do. Well, yeah, and I would love for you to be a part of that because of course, you see, you see for yourself. And I know the world see that it's, it's a problem. It's a, it's a big problem that America, which is one of the exactly. richest countries in the world, we have homelessness. And it's out of millions. It's, it's happening everywhere. I went to Chicago three months ago, and I've seen it in Chicago. I went to Hawaii a year ago, and I've seen it in Hawaii. So it's not just happening in our backyard, but it's just happening everywhere. And it's, it's breaking my heart as a man of God, and I know God is concerned, like, what are you doing about it? And since I'm fortunate, I must give back. I gotta give back. It's, just, it's my compassion for the, for the lost and the unsaved as well as the homeless to give back, you know? Not just stand and just, okay, well, I'll just preach a sermon and go home, jump in my brand new car and go home to my three bedroom house and forget about it. No, this, this, we need to outreach more, and, and that's what it's lacking today. Right. Well, definitely, we need to do that. And uh, there are so many people that are in need, uh, and it's nothing like being a, uh, you know, lending a helping hand in some, some type Absolutely. of way. You know, so a lot of Absolutely. people are going through a lot, but uh, there, there are people that are going through more than the others. So Absolutely. Uh, I think that's a great thing that you're doing and uh, I wish you the very best with that. And again, I would like to assist with that in some type of way, however we can do that. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. I, and I, feel, I, I feel privileged for you to extend that offer and um, I will hold you on that. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I know you're a woman of your word. But I'm oh, well, certainly that, I am. I'm serious about it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, most certainly. Look, you know, so, uh, you know, your advice to young people, because I'm, I'm one of those people All that right. love to give advices to young people that, All right. you know. I, I, you know, I, I got some sound advice. I just told one of my goddaughters, I have two, and I told her that you got to love yourself first before you can desire any love from anyone else. And you have to respect yourself. Um, and then secondly, I said, focus on school. That's the most important thing right now. Don't focus on boys or girls, but focus on school. And then focus on your goals. Acquire your goals and set goals for yourself. 
Now, it's easier said than done, but if you do these things, just the basics, you'll see fruit from these things. And what I mean by fruit is you'll see growth. And then everything that you would anticipate or you see somebody else have, you wind up having. So just take one day at a time, young person, one day at a time, and, and take it slow. There's no need to rush in anything. And say no to drugs, say no to gangs. You, you, you're you witnessing a soldier that was in it, and I was in it to win it, and I lost. That's it. I almost lost my life. But thank God for the victory that I have in Christ that I didn't, and I'm able to tell my story that it's not worth it being in any game, whether in Chicago, Atlanta, or even Los Angeles, where I'm from originally, or in Baton Rouge. It's not worth it. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your talent. You're wasting your youth. And it's nothing good can come out of that. Nothing at all. Nothing but evil. Because I know for myself, yeah. Yeah. And, that, and look, that's good advice to share with someone, um, especially, you know, these young people, because yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, you, you find a lot of them going astray and they find, you know, drugs um, as a way or, you know, to relieve yeah. them from whatever that they're going through. Oh, and, yeah. um, so, and that's why I mentioned love. You got to love yourself. Right. Because if you really love yourself, you won't hurt yourself. Right. You know what I mean by doing something that you know is wrong. We hear all the time when we're young that don't do this, don't play with fire, you know, don't do that and don't do this. But really, if you really love yourself, you'll understand that. Yeah. I don't need these drugs to exist. I don't need a gang to, to exist, you know. Right. I don't need it. Yeah. So it's like, a waste of time. right, absolutely. So if someone wants to reach out to you to assist with uh, you feeding the homeless, uh, yes. or even just a part of your outreach, maybe yes. want to donate in some kind of way. Okay. Uh, and and they... I'm going to tell you too, I, I, I forgive me for interrupting, but I have to say, okay. I have my license, so I'm legit with the state of Louisiana. So okay. I just got my license actually yesterday. Well, praise um, God. That's awesome. So tell uh, them how they can reach you. How can they reach you? Uh, they can reach me uh, directly by phone okay. at 310-946-1242. And they can also reach me by my pen pal or email. Actually, my email right on here. If I can just give you a close. And I'll put it on the screen, too, at the end of the screen. Yes. For sure. All right. If you um, can see it. Yeah. And then uh, also, too, they can reach out to me and I'll make sure that they yes, can contact absolutely. me. Because absolutely. And it'll be a blessing to the community of Baton Rouge. Um, some of the poor, many of the poor people already know me. <laughs> they know me well. So my face is not a stranger to the community. I mean, the community basically are homeless. They see me out there. So well, definitely good. they know me by faith, but they don't know my story, but they know that light. And that's important because that's all I do is share the word and, and give them light and hope mm -hmm. when they feel like it's hopeless. Yeah. You know, I just give them joy and they know me. They know me. They, they, oh, definitely. They see me around. Well, great. That is awesome, Samuel. So is there anything else that you would like to share before we end our conversation? Oh, you know what? It's just been an honor to be before you and to be exposed. The spotlight here in this form, this platform. Thank you. Uh, I'm truly grateful to my wife. I have to acknowledge her. She's behind the scenes working with me daily. I want to thank my family and I want to thank uh, everybody, my friends who really pray for me and support me and, and just really go the extra mile. I got people all over the country supporting me. I got some writers in, in Washington finishing up my book and, and really trying to get everything together. I got people in LA praying for me. I got people in New York. I got family in New York 
They're making my shirts. It's just, I just want to give a shout out to all of them that really supported my vision Please and what God so. has given me. And I want, and I'm, I thank God for this platform. I truly do. Because this is just a, a, a huge stone, bigger and better things. Not to be seen, not to really be heard, but to glorify my Father mm. who's in heaven. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Amen. Oh, wow. That is awesome. You sound like a minister. You're on your way. Uh, you uh, are ministering. Well, <laughs> I, I do that on the street. I do that on the street and naturally. That's, all right. that's, that's where it's needed. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't always <laughs> have to be behind the podium. So, you no, know. No, no, not at all. And, and, and you know what? It does the body good, too, and the spirit good when you're out there in the grassroots in the community. Yeah. That's where a lot of hurting people. Right. Are and some of them just not able to come to the house of the Lord. So you got to kind of meet them right there where they're hurting them. Like I had a guy just the other day. It was was it? It wasn't yesterday. It was the day before yesterday. He was yelling at the police, and he seen me in my suit. I had the same suit on, and um, he just came up to me and said, "You know what? They're giving me problems. They won't give me my personal items." I said, brother, I can't do anything about what's going on, but I know God can. And then we prayed right there. I said, brother, can I just pray for you so that you won't get locked up or these police beat you up? Because you, you are causing a lot of havoc where there's five cars out here and they watching you. I said, let me, let me just pray for you so that at least you be safe. And I know that God is taking care of what's going on here. And we prayed two minutes. And it, and it really blessed me because I wasn't ashamed just because I had a fine suit on and just because he was just dressed in regular clothing. It looked like he was one step homeless, just like me. I, I didn't mind hugging him. I didn't mind praying with him because I knew that that was God's will because he kept hanging out where I was at. And I knew he, he was looking for something, like something I had and I showed him. I got Jesus. Amen. That is awesome. I got Jesus. Yes. Yeah, I got Jesus. I showed him what I had. Mm. I'm not rich, but I know who the one who is. Yep. And I got Jesus. Yeah. So I showed him. And he didn't mind praying either. He bowed his head too. And then, you know, I can say 10 minutes prior to that, he was cussing the police. He was yelling. He was screaming, but he was calm as a baby. <laughs> Once we got out of that prayer, and he thanked me, and then he hugged me, and I didn't mind him touching me because I, I knew God was there. Because the Bible says, if two or more are gathered in my name, there yeah, I am I'm in just, the midst. So did it right. all in his name to his glory. Right. Absolutely. Look, I enjoy this conversation you. with you, Samuel, and I am wishing you the very best. And everyone uh, that is listening, you know, please be watchful and uh, stay tuned to know when this book is released called Born yeah. Again. Again. He has yes. a story Absolutely. to tell, and I'm sure that you all have enjoyed listening to his testimony, his story. Thank you. Thank because you. Thank it should you. touch someone in some kind of way, because we all have a story to tell. Oh, we yes, all absolutely. have been through something, some trials or tribulations and some struggles. But one thing we know, we got God, we got everything that we need. That's and right. he will He will see us through everything that we're going through. God will see us through, even through this pandemic. Just know That's that right. God That's will right. see us through. And this too shall pass. But right. I am uh, grateful and I thank you for being thank a part you. of Exposure Spotlight Magazine, for reaching out to us. I am truly honored and I count this as a privilege as well, Samuel. And again, I wish you the very best. And thank know you. this, you, thank you. Your thank you. voice matters. And God bless you. God bless you all.